three, two, one. Welcome back, everyone. This is the final episode before the release of Venture Kid on iOS. Um, it's still it's not out on Steam yet, but it is available Steam Greenlight, so you can check that out. But uh, it's coming out officially for the iOS uh, tomorrow, January fourteenth, or today, depending on when you see this. So I figured I would do the uh, the last song I would do for this series. Um, we'll just make it the craziest song that's on the soundtrack, uh, the final boss theme. So I got uh, some funny anecdotes about this, but uh, before we get to those, let's just play that track. So that's the final boss theme. Um, I, this is a weird one for me because usually I have a, a good memory of how I came about constructing a song. Uh, with this one, though, I don't remember how it happened. It just it just kind of uh, happened. I'm pretty sure uh, what what did end up happening was I, I had some leftover riffs. You know, like I, I always stockpiled them in the back here. I think I just had some extra stuff and I accidentally put some in a pattern and it just kind of created this uh, this opening bit here. Um, I, I looked at it a little bit before I started recording this and like I don't I don't know what's going on here. So let's just hear the square waves by themselves and uh, see if we can make some sense of this. All right, a little chaotic there. Let's hear one by itself. Okay, it's getting a little closer here. It is in a weird time signature, though. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's five, four. Alright, so that's not too weird. But then, like, what... I mean, I'll be the first to admit, I think this is just, I think this is just chaos. I don't think it makes sense, but, um, when you're kind of working with something that sort of zany, uh, what you can do is just try and anchor it with a nice baseline that kind of, uh, you know, ties it together, seals the deal. But even then, I don't know what, let's hear just the baseline. happened here kind of reminds me of that uh that scene from old school where uh will ferrell is doing the debate and he blacks out and ends up doing a debate competently but then um wakes up after and has no idea what has just happened like i don't remember writing any of this i don't know i mean it's it's not like i'm saying this song is oh so well woven but it uh for a final boss track for as much chaos as there is especially in that opening part um I, it it works for what I would want anyways like I, I don't know if it works for you guys but that's what I want but I don't know like if I was to recreate that I don't know where I would begin that's a that's a weird one I can tell you with this pattern though um enough enough self padding on the back there Norn um with this pattern where is it here we go you guys remember that first Hulk movie that came out um, the one with Eric Bana as the Hulk. There was a, a song that played during the opening credits. Such a good, um, 
It was like a really good theme song. Um, and it had like this, uh, this cascading sort of string part that, um, I definitely remember. Without referencing it, I wanted to do the same thing. Like, that's what I was hearing in my head. So I did it a lot faster, um, than, uh, than the track, obviously, but, um... That's kind of what it would look like on the NES, is something like this. So, uh, I think I'm just doing the scoop. Yeah, we got the 56, then it goes right to an 8, then 46. So we've talked about that. The scoop coming in handy. It's a good tool in the toolkit. Um, also, uh, you know, if, uh, what I would like to do, just a little sidebar here, I'd like to make some more videos, um, that are just the techniques by themselves, like in concise little things, so you don't have to, like, scrounge through an hour-long video just to hear, like, one little tidbit that, that makes sense, so the scoop would be a good one, I could, I could cover the scoop in, like, ten minutes if I wanted, uh, really well. Um, other than that, normal echoes, we've gone over those. What I did want to do, though, um, it's kind of fun playing with listeners sometimes. Like, when you when you look at this pattern, it's rapid fire. Like, the bass is... Duh, 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 duh. But then the very next pattern, um, the bass, for the entire soundtrack, this is the most sustained the bass ever actually gets. It's just one solid note. So, uh, to, to transition between those two... Because it's pretty buck wild at the start, or the, the pattern before it. So going from this pattern to the other one. So it's got a little, uh, it's got a transition. Bup, 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 bup. So uh, we staggered the listener just a bit uh, that, that we kind of went over before. We staggered the listener now. Something's happening. And you see how um, the entire, hold on, this thing, this thing, I swear. Okay, should be good for a bit. You can actually see it dipping. I noticed that watching the videos. Uh, anyways, um, since we're going from a pattern that's all rapid fire, like everything is one row apart, so each bass hit or triangle note hit is two rows here, and then at the end it's ba 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 da da, and we end on a four note. So the last thing the listener hears in this pattern is a four note, or sorry, a four row gap. And so that sort of sets them up like, okay, guess what? Next pattern, it's not always going to be blah, 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 blah. So not only uh, do we do that with the transition, blah, 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 with the four note gap, I start this pattern with a long bass so that it like extra breaks up the, uh, the, you know, the fast staccato, blah, 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 you know, so it, uh, you know, you just got to smooth the listener into that sort of, um, we're, we're changing it up here. So you give them no breadcrumbs that they can follow through. That's a pretty good drum track. Look at that, man. That's, that's a drum fill that has, all it is is snare hits, but it still sounds good to me. Um, I am using the, uh, round robin approach here. For a bit of the hits, but you know, by and large, that's just whack, 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 whack. But that's uh, it's a good. Sometimes it's a fun thing to to sort of do. Um, you just say like, all right, I want a drum fill, but I only want to use the snare. So then you have to start thinking about, you know, more uh, rhythmically. Like, okay, well, what's special about this then? If it's just the snare, um, so in this case, it's just. Bleh! But you know, it kind of it helps for the the speed. Like if you ever watch some drummers do their drum fills in like metal or thrash like that's a good that's a good um that's a good drum fill that they go to a lot just snare 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 snare, snare. and it it ends with a, a snare da, da 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 but then it starts with da 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 da, da again so it just kind of doubles up on that a kind of a fun game i like to do sometimes with the noise channel is um if the noise channel by itself can almost simulate the song, like imagine if I was like, all right, hey, limitations are fun and all, but uh, let's let's do a really hard limitation. Just write me a song with the noise channel by itself. Like, how would you make that interesting? So uh, one of the, the things I like to do, the noise channel is kind of sometimes um, just a summation of what the track should sound like. Like, I want just this constant sort of noise representation of the track itself so everything you hear here 
kind of just gets amplified by it being recreated in this one channel, and so the noise channel when I unmuted here. So uh, you do that with the volume levels, basically. So sometimes there's big sustained ones like that's what the C05 is, but then there's short ones too, which are the um, the O4s and stuff. Um, so you just kind of make the accents like whenever there's an accent like here. Actually, I don't do it here. Never mind. Don't listen to me. But on occasion, I want there to like. Here's a good example. Even though the other ones don't prove my point. Here, um, there's a four row thing here, and I want it to be distinct sounding. So there's also a four row noise hit, and sometimes you also have to lead up to a f like a four row noise hit with some transitions just in the noise channel by itself. So you'll notice there's two four row noise hits here before there's one that matches everything in the track, and that's kind of like a build up so that everyone gets ready that there's going to be an accented note uh, coming up. So let's, what is that, row 72? So let's, when it gets to row 64, which is halfway through, so after four full beats or whatever, um, we do uh, crash, 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 and that um, that sort of symbolizes the, uh, you know, the overall rhythm of the track. So let's hear that. Let's hear it again. It's almost like I want uh, this. The noise channel in this is um, that's what I want the the listener to be tapping their head to, like crash, crash, crash. I want them to do that. Um, yeah. Moving on. Little lead here, going with a little fifty percent duty cycle. It's kind of a weird transition out at the end there. Um, these kind of sound good when they're high notes. Kind of a slamming bass line. Like going back to that very first video I made, you remember me telling you about like, love it when the NES just had like, um, that's that's what we're hearing here. And so uh, good go-to move is just SC ones everywhere. I want that thing to be cut off, just cut it off. But I want it to be cut off as as close to the next note as possible. So you're just kind of getting you're you're getting hit with a lot of bass there. Um. Hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, last thing I want to talk about. Um. The transition at the end, you, uh, last video, I talked big time about transitions at the end uh, being something that I work on really hard. With a track, like, I was dreading this transition so much because this first part is so ridiculous. Um, like, good luck transitioning into that. Like, what do you, what do you do? Because it's uh, it's atonal. I don't think there's an actual melody or a key there. I think it's just it's kind of all messed up like a Slayer solo. Like there's really no structure there. It's just it's just kind of meant to sound like something. But that's really hard with them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Chip tunes because uh, you have to put a note there. You can't just be like, oh, I'm just going to kind of like on guitar. You uh, you need to have something there. So with this transition here, I fluked out. I remember it was like an early an early attempt to uh, loop it and it just it kind of worked out and uh, whew. so uh, yeah let's just hear that transition I can think of a big part of selling it is that bass line Um, yeah, because I mean, I'm going from it's kind of a tempo change, but it's also like I'm going from non staccato to staccato. Um, and yeah, it was just kind of the solution. I guess you do some staccato, so you're like, hey, guess what? We're gonna start getting crazy here, but then oh, yeah, don't forget your roots here. We're doing fours. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, that's a wild track. Uh, I like it. I'm glad that it turned out the way it did. I almost can't take credit for even having my name attached to this. I don't know how this song wrote itself. The weird one. They're just a weird one. But uh, final boss themes, man. Nothing beats a good final boss theme. <clears throat> Not saying mine, but man, like you get to like level eight in Contra and everything just gets all weird. Awesome. You get to, um, you know, it's just when you were younger, you know, before you had save states or, or what do games have now? Like uh, checkpoints. Before you had checkpoints, man, you get to the final boss in a game and you get to a final boss in some games. And it's like, well, I don't have any continues left. And this is my last life. And this is the only chance I'm going to get to, like, see this boss, hear this song, die immediately, start the game over again. Like, sometimes those those final boss themes or last level sort of themes, man, they, uh, they're they some of the uh, most hectic and, like, I don't know, stressful stressful moments as a kid. But but cool all the same. Like, yeah, I remember, I remember getting to, the, like, the final boss of Rygar once. And, like, that whole final castle, like, I was genuinely scared playing that last level because it was, like, this weird ominous arpeggio that's playing and, like, there's no drums or nothing and, like, uh, it's good memories. So, yeah, it's something about final bosses or, like, last. Also, what did you guys used to call the final boss in the game? Because when I was a kid, we always just called it the last guy. Oh, I got to the last guy. And like I, I know I don't know like final boss is like just what I use now. I think that's the the proper term for it. Um, but yeah, last guy. That's what I always used to um, call the last boss in the game or last boss even. But uh, no, it was always last guy when I was a kid. So let's uh, dive into some of the deleted scenes and then we'll wrap this whole thing up. <laughs> Oh, man, it's exactly the same. That's cool. I was going for something here, I guess. Wait, let's hear those two together. But yeah, there's a, a little piece that I just couldn't fit in. Ooh, hey, this is probably supposed to be attached. Let's hear it attached. Mm, just didn't didn't finish it, but I like that. What else we got? Construction patterns here. Ooh, that's some weird. Damn, that would have been good as heck in there. What am I doing here? They're all just hitting the same note, and there's some detuning, I think. Simple as that. Who knew? Kinda sounds like a ninja level or something. This is good stuff. I have to leave it out because it's just like it would have... Like it would have derailed the sort of overall... At least it gets to shine a little here. This is the only place it'll ever shine. Almost. It's cool uh, drum fills I'm doing there, but yeah, couldn't pull it off. Check this out. I mean, this would have been cool. This would have been acceptable. Just duplicate that a couple times. And then, uh, what do we 
do here? Something like that. That could have worked. The, the patterns that never were. Huh. I basically did the exact same thing after. Could have been good too. Now, what was I doing? Why am I deleting this stuff? I just like those first couple notes. Do 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 do. Like it's real uh, bouncy. Oh, maybe I can figure out how I wrote this intro part. That wraps it up. That wraps it up. That's a wrap. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Well, I'm really happy that uh, some people have uh, enjoyed these videos and people have checked them out, uh, despite them being way too long to actually get any useful chiptune information from. Those videos are coming. Uh, I'd like to keep making videos uh, on other chiptunes that I made, even more from the soundtrack. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit. I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, as long as you guys keep watching these vids, then then uh, it'll all be worth it. I mean, I, truth be told, I probably do it anyways, just because, I don't know, it's fun making videos. All right, everyone, that's a wrap on Venture Kid. Uh, that's a wrap on all the songs that I'm able to do before the release date. Um, so that's coming out today. Um, the game itself is coming out today on iOS, the full game. So definitely check that out. Um, it is also available on Steam Greenlight. Um, but that's uh, that's just a green light version. Uh, but definitely check if you need controller. Definitely check that one out because the control on that game in particular, mwah, very good control, very tight control. Much appreciated for a, a 2D platformer. So yeah, um, I'm gonna be releasing the soundtrack on Bandcamp. Um, it's gonna be name your price. So name your price. Um, that could be zero too. Um, if you if you don't feel like paying anything, you just enter a little zero in there, hit enter, and you get a download link. So um, there's no excuse not to check it out. Um, but yeah, please do check it out. And uh, you won't hear this in a lot of places, but share it with your friends. I don't care. Just give it to people. Give those files to people. Um, do whatever you want with those files. Um, if that means sharing them with other people, definitely do it. Share it. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm an advocate of uh, sharing. So, yeah, one other thing, one added incentive, um, the Bandcamp release will also come with an IT file, uh, which is the format that ModPlug uses, an IT file that has all of the songs that I did leading up to this one, so all the ones up to this one and this one. Um, so it's an IT file that has all the songs in it, so, I mean, if you want to open them up and uh, check them out for yourself, all you have to do is download ModPlug, which is a free program. Just type it into Google or, you know, DuckDuckGo or whatever. Get yourself ModPlug, open up the template, um, and then feel free to fiddle around with the songs. Um, it's, a, it's a really good learning tool uh, to just open up uh, ModPlug and, and sort of see, see things in action. Actually get your hands dirty and start uh, removing things and putting things in different places and, and get a feel for how to write in a tracker. Um, and once you get a good feel of that, um, feel free to just stop using it and go right on over to Family Tracker because Family Tracker is what you should be using if you want to make NES music at this point. But 
um, this template file is at least a good learning tool, especially if you use it in conjunction with all the videos that I've made so far, because then you can follow along. So that's there. Um, but what you can also do is just extract all the uh, samples that I made um, from ModPlug and use them in like samplers and things like that, because these are good samples, good wholesome NES samples uh, created from Famitracker, so they're pure. Uh, digitally pure. Anyways, I didn't get them from the NES itself because it would have had line noise and it's garbage. You don't want that. So anyways, um, yeah, you can use those samples uh, in whatever you want. Um, they're yours to use. Um, you can also use uh, my template as like a construction tool to start building your own songs. Um, so like rearrange notes or use my 56, 48, 16 method. Like all the methods I'm using, the techniques, use them. They're, they're still good. Use them in Family Tracker too. They're all good. Um, but what you can't do, what is forbidden, is to just put your name on the IT file, not make any changes or make any like reasonable changes, and then call it your own. Something you should avoid because people will people will know, and you know, save yourself a lot of heartache by not being one of those people. Um, but yeah, please do. Uh, if you have any questions, send me some questions, and I'll help you. Uh, I'll help you get started with your own uh, chiptune odyssey. Uh, but okay, other than that, uh, I think I've covered everything. Check out the game. Get the game. Um, support the uh, the dev. He's a he's a good dude. Um, also, get the soundtrack. Uh, download it if you have to, or name your price. Um, I will say that it's 56 minutes of NES action, which is a uh, pretty pretty dang big for an NES game. But uh, there's a lot of variety in there. There's a lot of goofiness. Uh, just a lot of fun. Check it out. I, I'm just rambling at this point. Check it out. Check it out. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, we'll see you on the next video, whatever that may be. Keep your eyes peeled for the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching this video. We'll see you guys next time. Feel free to subscribe to this channel.